Tso Pema Lotus Lake, also known as Rewalsar Lake, is located in the Mandi district of Himachal Pradesh, India. Here, we embark on a mystical journey alongside Princess Mandarava and her enlightened teacher, Guru Padmasambhava, also known as Guru Rinpoche. The legend begins in the kingdom of Zahor, where the king desired a male heir. But when the queen gave birth to a daughter, his heart remained heavy. By the age of thirteen, the princess had matured into a stunningly beautiful woman. Many kings and princes from neighboring countries made marriage proposals, but the king, wary of enmity, sought the princess's choice, as advised by his ministers. However, the princess, wise beyond her years, envisioned a different path, one dedicated to dharma and spiritual practice. Her father refused, saying that it was impossible for a female practitioner to achieve realization in one lifetime and that she should find a suitable spouse. Out of desperation, the princess fled the palace, scratching her face, cutting her hair, and putting on dirty clothes. Her parents sent out a search party and, once they found her, decided to grant her wish to become a nun. Meanwhile, Guru Padmasambhava, the great master of Adiyana, saw Mandarava's potential and decided to meet the nun princess. When they saw him, the princess and the five hundred nuns paid him respects and gifts, and the princess requested teachings, realizing he was her root guru. Unfortunately, a cowherder witnessed the entire scene and assumed he was her lover. When the king and queen were informed, they immediately went to see their daughter. When they approached the locked door of her chambers, they heard a male voice speak, which confirmed their suspicions. They arrested their daughter and imprisoned her in a pit jail. They decided to burn her teacher alive. The king ordered his servants to prepare a large amount of wood and oil, and they set it on fire with Guru Padmasambhava in the center. The fire burned for a full week, and black smoke is said to have covered the sky. When they saw that the smoke had not faded, they realized something was wrong and went there to investigate. They saw Guru Rinpoche sitting calmly on a giant lotus floating in the middle of a lake, surrounded by rainbow lights and hundreds of dakinis singing praises to him. Because he had become one with the nature of the elements, fire could not burn him and instead manifested as a beautiful lake with a ring of fire still burning around it. The king and everyone else present experienced a sudden surge of faith and repented for their negative actions against such an enlightened being. The king prostrated before the guru, presenting his royal robes and ornaments. He then brought him to the palace, seated him on the royal throne, dressed as a king, and sent for his daughter, Princess Mandarava, who had been imprisoned in a pit for a week. The princess refused to leave, stating that she did not want to leave her jail. When the king, queen, and their ministers asked for her forgiveness and asked her to return to the palace, she eventually agreed. The king offered Guru Padmasambhava his entire kingdom and all of his riches, requesting that he stay in Zahor and teach all beings there. It is said that the great guru of Urgian agreed to stay and spent a long time there. Many masters, practitioners, and lay people visited and practiced at Tso Pema over the next 1,300 years. As a result, there are monasteries, temples, holy caves, and other special places there, as well as in Mandi, the ancient capital of the Zahor kingdom. A self-manifest Tara, nestled within a rock shrine, bestows blessings on the faithful. Mandarava's cave on the west bank tells the story of her unwavering faith. The retreat center, built around Guru Padmasambhava's three holy caves and Dakini Mandarava, is accessed by a staircase. The main cave has a large Guru Rinpoche statue and a smaller one behind it with Dakini Mandarava. The walk is 45 minutes long and straight uphill. Above these two is a hut that was built above Padmasambhava's secret cave. It is an excellent location for practice. Over the years, some notable Turtuns have discovered treasures and hidden teachings in these caves. It is said that there are still some to be discovered, particularly in Padmasambhava's secret cave, where you can see a strange circular rock formation in the wall on the left as soon as you enter the cave. From there, climb uphill and pass through the Lunta Hill, where pilgrims hang prayer flags and light incense. If you go through, or around it, to the other side of the hilltop, 
there are white marble stairs that lead to a small hut with a footprint of Padmasambhava in the rock, about two meters above the ground. Three significant pilgrimage sites can be found in Mandi, the kingdom of Zahor's first major town and ancient capital. One is the actual prison pit where Mandarava was held for a week. The locals call it Koarani. It does not look like it used to because it has been restored by locals who regard it as an important temple, but it remains a special place today. The third place to visit in Mandi is Tarna Mandar, where Guru Rinpoche gave teachings after the events at Tsopema. It is a beautiful hilltop park above Mandi. Guru Padmasambhava took the royal princess Mandarava as his consort, and they then went to the Maradika cave, where for three months they practiced the sadhana of longevity. The Buddha of Limitless Life, Buddha Amateus, appeared, bestowing longevity upon them and blessing them as inseparable from him. They both attained the second Vidyadhara level, Vidyadhara with mastery over life. Later, Guru Padmasambhava traveled to Tibet to spread Vajrayana Buddhism. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing to Mindful Himalaya for more videos.